Hello and welcome back to a, another editing session with me, Jaeger Anderson. Uh, I did a little photo shoot uh, with Jenna, and as you see, I have this nice photo that I took of her. The apple trees were looking super nice, and I wanted to capture something sort of romantic and sort of, you know, delicate um, sort of portrait, and so that's what we're going to be editing today. Uh, so yeah, not going to do much. I'm just going to open this up a little bit. We're pretty wide as far as the range on our histogram is here. I'm just going to see if I can make it a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. I just want to flatten it. I just want to flatten it a little bit. The reason why I want to flatten it a little bit is because I can always add a, uh, I can always add contrast back later, you know? So what I'm doing is I'm squishing the stuff towards the center of this, of my histogram here, and I'm sort of flattening the image, you know, I'm taking out the contrast. I'll add contrast in later. This is just how I like to do it, and um, different, different strokes for different folks, but this is how I'm going to do it. That looks pretty good. I'm not gonna do anything else beyond that. We're looking nice and sharp. I love it. Um, and I'm gonna think I'm gonna crop this. I would do a little pre-crop. Um, I think I have it on a five by seven crop. Let's see. Yep, five by seven. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I just want a little bit more centered. And something like that. I think that looks good. Commit to that. That looks nice. I'm happy with that. Nice and centered. So now we're going to go to our exporting. And we're going to select this as a PSD. Oh, actually, let me see. Let me see how I want to do this. I want to do this as, yeah, this is all correct. Destination, that's fine. Call this Jenna. Oops. Jenna. And then this is good. Open with Adobe Photoshop 2020. Looking fancy. I think that's everything that I need. All right, so we're going to process this and this will open up automatically in the Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop and we're ready to rock. All right, first things first is we're gonna run some actions here. We're gonna do some frequency separation. Um, FS 2.0 big. That's what we're gonna do. So we're doing some frequency separation and essentially what we're doing is we're separating the texture from the color. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go a little smaller. Just gonna use my arrow keys, nudge this a bit. Go over to the eye. Six looks pretty good, seven looks good. Mm. I think seven, seven looks good. I'm happy with seven. Oh! That was unfortunate. Continue. Boop. All right. That did some interesting stuff. All right, so now we're ready to rock. I'm gonna hit F for full screen. And we're gonna get in here, I'm gonna start playing around. We're gonna start on our high layer. And if you're curious what that looks like, I will just alt click here and you can see what that looks like. That's all my texture. So we're going to our texture. Mm, I think we're going to try the patch tool, which is the J key. And then we're going to zoom in and we're just going to do a little cleanup. Do a little, do a little skin cleanup. Nothing fancy. I do this with all of my fancy portraits like this. Some people are not a fan of Photoshop. Some people think that this is wrong. I say, so I don't like to remove anything that is permanent. So like, I like to keep moles, scars, things like that. Things that give character to the person. But things like 
pimples and stuff, you don't need them because those things come and go, right? They're not a person's character isn't changed by whether or not they have a pimple on their face or not. So I get rid of them or stray hair, you know? So that's what I do. I get rid of them, you know? Um, as you can see, there's some of all of these lovely curls are spilling onto the face. So I don't want that. I don't want all of these flyaways. So I'm gonna go to my S tool, make sure that we have a low flow, bring that down, nice and soft. I'm gonna zoom in here and make this easier on myself. I'm gonna start cloning away. Uh, actually, let's increase the flow. Let's let's see what happens if I crank that flow. Yeah, that's more like it. Let's just let's make quick work of this, shall we? Sometimes you want to be slow and delicate. Sometimes you want to be fast, and we're going for fast right now. It's Friday night, you know. I got no plans, but let's uh. Let's not take forever, shall we? I got, I got, I got TV shows to watch. I got, <laughs> I got water to drink and I gotta get to bed at a decent hour. I mean, it's 8.18, you know, I wanna be in bed by nine o'clock. You think I'm joking? I am, it's Friday night. I'll probably, well, well what I did was I had some coffee and I shouldn't have done that. I was like, you know what I need on a Friday night at eight o'clock? Some coffee. Why not? Why not some coffee? Bad mistake. I know that's gonna keep me up all night. Oh well. Um, I'm not worried about the color. So you can see how there's some redness here in the cheek and some discoloration. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna save that for my low layer. So that's why we do frequency separation so that we can um, separate the color from from the uh, from the texture. And while that does make the process a little slower because you're not doing everything at once, right? It does give you much, much, much more control. And uh, that's what I'm all about. I'm all about that control. Let's get rid of these little imperfections here. Wee, wee. I'm holding on the space bar that allows me to click and move around. I'm also gonna help myself out here by adding a curves adjustment layer. I'm just gonna bring down the light. This is just to help me so I can see more, more of the skin. That's just gonna help me. It's a little bright. So I'm still on the high layer, just getting rid of any, any kind of imperfections in the texture. So the process for this kind of works like so you start with texture, then you move to color, and then we do some color adjustments and taking care of that and then dodge and burn. Now you can kind of mix match your process a little bit. I always start with texture because texture's the most obvious um, thing to correct or retouch first. And then I will move into the uh, the color. Sometimes I like to do texture and then dodge and burn and then come back to color. But I was uh, a, a really good retoucher by the name of Earth Oliver, who I've taken courses with. Uh, I was talking to him up on Facebook because I had some questions about retouching. Um, and he was explaining that, you know, you do, you can go back and forth, you can kind of bounce around. You do what you got to do in order to get the best image. There's, you know, people do what they got to do to get what they need. And I like that. So another thing is I don't really, um, I don't really like this necklace. Um, I think it's distracting. And even though I asked Jenna to take the necklace on after these shots, uh, this was my favorite image of the Apple tree shots that we did. So I have to uh, I have to Photoshop that out, which is not a big deal with frequency separation. Super easy to do. Not complicated at all. And we're gonna do it. 
I don't want to get rid of too many of these flyaways, right? I don't want it to look strange, but I am gonna, I am gonna get rid of some of this. Wee. You might be thinking, why do you need to get rid of that? Well, it's all about distractions. The thing is, all of this is about limiting distractions. What's distracting you from the image? What is distracting you from the, where I want people to focus? And I want people to focus on the model. I want them to focus on her eyes and the flowers and the story that's being told. I don't want them to be like, oh, look at the, the hair that's up here and stuff and all that stuff. That's not the point. I don't I want I want her expression and her face to be the main focus. And that's also why I'm going to get rid of this necklace, because it's a bit distracting. I may or may not change the color of this sweater. Um, I haven't decided yet. Anyway, let's keep going. We got a lot of work to do. And the bed is calling me. Alrighty, alrighty. So this is always. I mean, this is this is one of my favorite things to do. I love retouching, even though it is a long process. I nerd out over this stuff. I like coming in here and I like being like, oh, wow, that looks amazing. You know, and don't worry, we're going to make this thing, this image look Fantastic. If I can get it done in an hour, we're going to be rocking. Wow, this is just doing see how it's just boom. I love I love this. This is just knocking it out of the park, baby. Knocking it out of the park. I'm not worried about how some of these are cut off. If I were going if I if this were a beauty and this were an editorial, you know, if this were going in a magazine, I would stress out about this a lot more. This is just for my portfolio. This is just something fun. I'm not going to stress out getting everything perfect. Um, so like this little thing, actually, you know what? It is going to stress me out. So I'm just going to go mur, 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 mur. there. It's gone. I don't have to stress about it. Mur, 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 mur. Now it's gone. I find that sound effects really help when you're retouching. So like here you see like anything that's super bright, that's going to be distracting. Going to get rid of these little blemishes down here. It's hard to know what's on the top layer, what's on the bottom layer. And it may look like we haven't done a lot, but boy, we have. Watch this. You want to see a little trick? We just go here and click Alt. Boop. Well, let's turn that off. Here we go. Boop, boop. Look at all that. Pretty cool. Love it. All right, let's get our helper back on. Now we got to get rid got to get rid of this hair on the neck. Oh, he's a blast. Do do do. I love this apple tree though. It's so pretty. I was walking by it and I was like, I got to photograph that. I got to photograph somebody in that apple tree cuz that looks amazing. Um, do 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 clean up. This is the cleanup stage of our retouching process, and it's always really fun. It's always really impactful. Watch this. We're just going to boop and we're just going to drag. And now you can see how there's like this gross like shadow of where the jewelry was. Not a big deal. And the reason why it's not a big deal is because is because we I mean, I can show you quickly. We'll just go down to low layer. I'm going to use my mixer brush, so I'm going to press shift B until it pulls up the mixer brush. It's a brush with a little eye drop and it has a low flow and I'm just going to go like this. Actually, I'm going to increase my flow. I'm going to make this a little a little more intense. And see, look at that. Just like that. We're moving pixels and it's going away. And the cool thing is, is that we're just changing because we're these these 
layers are separated out, the texture from from the uh, from the color, we're not affecting the actual skin texture here. We're just affecting color. Now I'm gonna have to dial in on this, but you can see how much already that has changed. I'm gonna keep keep going on on the high layer, and I'm gonna come back to that. But I just wanted to show you quickly what the power of that frequency separation can do when you're you just remove things like jewelry. I mean, it just makes just makes removing things that you don't want very easy. I've used it. I've used it to like adjust people's hair. I've used it to, you know, somebody had a crooked tie. I've, you know, gotten rid of their, I've fixed the crookedness of their tie. You can do just about anything with it. Um, it's pretty, pretty amazing, the frequency separation. Which is what this is, right? We're, we're, this process right here, this cleanup process is stage one of, of the frequency separation. Oops, don't want that. So I want to get rid of these flyaways, but I don't want to interrupt that braid. The braid looks really nice. I don't want to mess with that. But I do want to get rid of some of these flyaways. Whee! All right, so that messed up. So we're going to undo that. Deselect. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in closer with our stamp tool because that is how we like to do it. Big little area and just get in here nice and close. Bing. Boom. Easy breezy. Oops. It would help if I sampled an area that's already clean. It would help. It would be nice. Would it not? Do, 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 do. So just get rid of all those flyaways. Don't eat them. Don't want them. And you'd be like, where'd they go? They went away. They are hidden away. They are never coming back. Uh, da, da, da. Let me know in the comments if you're watching this anywhere that I've posted it. Let me know if there is something you would like to see me do in Photoshop. I mean, this is sort of my bread and butter. I, I don't do anything too fancy in Photoshop. I mean, I, I, you know, I'll goof around and stuff. But for the most part, I focus on retouching type stuff because it's the most the most useful for it's the most useful. Now I'll do retouching for products. I'll do retouching for people. I'll do retouching for, you know, food. Um, just about anything, but retouching is an art. It is something I love. It is a necessity. And, and if you don't know how to do it, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You know, I had a video I talked about you know, things you got to know how to do or things to help you out as a budding photographer. You got to know how to edit, you know, and that's what this is. We're editing here. If you don't know how to edit, you, you're, you, you don't really know too much about photography. You know, photography is as much about editing as it is about taking the photo. If you're not a good editor, you're not a good photographer. Sorry, I know that's controversial. Shots fired. No, I might get some heat for that. Um, but anyway, let's see. Let's open this up a bit. All right, it's a little dark over here, so I'm going to turn off my, my helper mask so I can see what I'm doing. Nice. Just going to go in here and clean this up a bit. Thing about curly hair, you know, curly hair is everywhere. It goes everywhere. And I say that as a curly haired person, I keep my hair very short. Although when I was younger, I had long curly hair. I had a mullet confession. Uh, 
that looks okay. I'm not crazy about it, um, but that's okay. Because what I can do is I can just as easily, you know, go in here, add a little more texture in. Boop. And, uh, you know, do that. I also can add some, I can draw in some curls as well. But I don't think it's too distracting. I think it looks fine. It might look a little bit too perfect. But, uh, we can soften this brush. Oh, Oop. That looks okay. That looks pretty good. All right, I'll take it. That's good enough. Good enough. I like it. Let's see where else we need to go. All right, all the frizzies up here, all the flyaways, we're gonna get rid of those. So I think we'll use the patch tool for that. Keep it simple. This stuff, don't need it. Don't need it, it's not doing anything. It's doing us no favors. Do, 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 do. All right, let's go in. I think we're gonna go with the stamp tool. Stamp tool is going to be a little bit easier. It's a little faster. Right now we're going for speed. I got the need, the need for speed. Nice. Up in here, this is a little tricky because there's the flower, oops. But I think we will be fine. How are we doing? All right, got some more over here. Dugga, dugga, dugga. And the thing is, is that what I'll what I can do? Sometimes you can be you can stress about it and be like, well, it looks unnatural or what have you. And you're like, that's okay because I can always come in here and I can cut and paste from somewhere else on the hair, or alternatively, I can go in here with a paintbrush and paint in some hair, which I have done. And I am not afraid to do if I have to. If that's what this calls for, that's what I'll do. Um, dun, dun, dun. I do not like this hair right here. Wee. Oops. Wee. Again, sound effects always help. That is That needs to go away. I do not like that hair that close to her eyeball. Get rid of these little lines. Don't need those little lines there. You doing no favors. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, now I'm just getting sidetracked. I was in the hair and I'm just moving all over the place. It happens, you know, sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. And right now we're going with the flow. Okay. Things that are complicated, things that are not complicated. Okay, that looks good. It looks fine. Um, I think that, do I want to go in here? I guess. Do I care? Maybe not. Maybe. Let's see what we can do.
and see how there's a little residue of the brown. Again, what we'll do is, whoops, started deleting the flower, um, is we will um, go into the low layer, which is where the color is, and we can, we can change that. Whee! That looks a little less distracting, I think. Did it and did it did it and did it. All right, there is a lot of hair here. Even though I have watched a lot, I've taken a lot of lessons on retouching, I fear that hair is still a super complicated subject for me. I still struggle with hair, particularly how to cut hair out from a background. Um, there are a lot of processes for it and I have just not mastered it. I'm just not a master yet, not yet. Perhaps one day. Um, that looks okay. I'm gonna make this, oop, that's nice and hard. We do not want it that hard. Actually, meh, meh, medium hard. We'll go 16. Just wanna push this in here. I do not want any, it's okay if the hair looks a little gray. I don't mind that. I do not want there to be brown on the background. All right, let's go back to our high layer, high layer and get rid of this, cause that looks, not good. I just want there to be like movement for these curls. So now there's like boop and there's like this little this little curve, right? It looks natural. If I can oopsies, I can get rid of. Oh, whoops. That sometimes happens. You know, sometimes you accidentally move the whole layer. Don't want to do that, though. No, no, no. Can't have that. This hair, this hair, that's a lot of hair. I don't know. Don't know how I feel about that. So much hair, hair on hair. We're making progress though. Don't stress. We're gonna make it, I promise. Just gotta, there's no, the thing about retouching hair is that there is no fast, quick solution. All you do all you can do is one step at a time. I don't know why that's doing that, but whatever. Do, 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 do. The thing about using the stamp tool, which is what I'm doing right here, so I can get nice and close, is that it um, it demands that you uh, that you sample and resample. I don't know why it's doing that. It's doing that weird thing where like, oops, I'm on the low layer. Don't want to do that. Need to be on high. You have to you have to click with the alt key and click somewhere and then sample an area and then paint. Um, you can um, turn off this tool. It's aligned where if I, I can sample one point and then every time I pick up my thing, my uh, cursor, it'll sample from that exact same spot every time. So that's convenient. That is a fun little trick to do. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. We're making progress, people. We're making progress. No, it doesn't look like it, but the hair is slowly being retouched. Ta -ta. 
Make, making moves. Changing my brush size so I can get nice and close to the fingers. And is it good enough? Well, it's good enough as far as the hair is concerned. I just need to get rid of this color. There's a lot of color in here that see it's all you can see where the curls were. So we're going to use our brush tool. And we're going to paint in. Like so. Also don't mind if that flower gets some blue into it. That doesn't bother me. And that Look at that. Oh, uh, this must be slightly off. Is it off or is it on? There we go. Now we're back. Now we're back in business. OK, that's probably why there was a, a weird fringing going on before because it was slightly off. I was like, why was it doing that? Make this a little bigger. Boop, boop, boop. I do not mind if this has a little blue. Again, I say I do not mind if it has a little blue. All right, let's go in here and get this a little closer on the hair because I do not want I really just want a, uh, the thick curl to be prominent. I don't really care about the little small curls, just the kind of the big, the big chonk, the big chonky curls, you know, all about the girls with the curls. All right, there we go. That looks good. That looks good. I'm happy. I'm happy. There's some stuff up here. I'm not too concerned about. Hmm, maybe I should be. Eh, there's some I'll probably. Hmm, good question. I might add some more flowers up here because it looks a little bare. So we'll think about that. We'll think about that and we'll, we'll come back to it. All right, let's go back down here on our low level. Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee here. I'm going to uh, come back down here on the neck and I'm going to see if I can address um, uh, I'm going to see if I can get rid of this necklace because that's a problem. You know, can't have a shadow of a necklace if there's no necklace. So we have our brush tool, our mixer brush tool, and we're just going to and you can probably see that the chain is still visible there and we are going to have to take care of that and that's going to be complicated, but don't worry, we're going to do it. We got so many cool things we're going to do, you know? Oh my goodness, look at that. Boom. It's like it wasn't even there. All right, let's go to our high level. Use our stamp tool. We're coming in hot here. We're going to go S nice and small. We're going to sample. Ooh, that looks terrible. All right, let's see what we can do here. You know what? We're going to go J tool. We're going to go wah, wah, wah. Oops, that's not what I want. That's what I want. We're just going to go boop. And even though that looks like poo poo, oh, that looks like poo poo too. That doesn't look half bad. That doesn't look half bad. In fact, that solved a lot of the problem. And now I can just kind of go up and then what? Oh, nope, I do not want to do that. Sometimes when you do something bold like that, when you're just like, I'm going to take out all of this stuff. It's just like, no, you're not. Can't do it. So like we did on this side, when we got really close to the curl, we're going to do that over here so that 
Things don't look weird. Actually, I think we're just going to do this number here. Yep, we're just going to go here and we're going to chop in the curl. Because there is um, a uh, big curl here. I think we can just play it off. That looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It looks a little bit too cut out, and that's because there is this weird line. But we're going to get rid of that. And again, because we have our color separated from our texture, no big deal. Oops, don't want to mess up the chin. I uh, got this little hair, little flyaway, runaway curl, coming in hot. Can't have that. Come in there, there. Looking pretty good. All right, let's go back to our low level mixer brush coming in here. Boom. Right, because we don't we don't want any remnants of the necklace. We also don't want this to be like this color over here, right? We have to make things look Transitions have to look normal. Shadows have to exist. You have to look at where the light is. Light is coming down here. So, you know, there can be some light on this side. That's fine. But it should be darker than, like, we can't lighten underneath the chin or on the neck there. That would be, that would be weird. Um, but we do want the colors to look normal and we do want things to blend nice and smoothly. So that's what this process is right here. That's what we use the mixer brush for. We make things blend smoothly, particularly the colors. Well, colors look good. We can do it on the cheeks too, you know? We can go in here and make the cheeky cheeks look uniform, as far as the color is concerned. Um, all that jazz. Again, don't want to go too crazy. I'm, I got a high flow here. I think I need to drop my flow down at least to 10. 15's a little aggressive. I'm not so aggressive. All right, we're doing pretty good here, y'all. We're doing pretty good. I'm pretty happy. So far, so good. We'll do a little before and after. Boom, boom, look at that. Look how much progress. Look at that. All right, we're still going strong. We got a lot, a lot more we gotta do. We got some Shadows down here we need to get rid of, so we're going to get our high layer, J for a patch tool. Get rid of those little shadows, don't know what's going on there. Jagga, 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 jagga. You know, that's all good. Going in here. Taking a look-see. Looking good, looking good. So there's some like little weird things going on here because you have to remember there's a bunch of hair here that I just kind of got rid of. So there's gonna be, there is no information under there. I recreated that information. And so there's, it's, it's normal for there to be weird things happening. It's normal, it's normal is what I'm saying. Like there's this weird little line down here. Gotta get rid of that with this color. Let me go here, just boop, boop, boop. Buff the wood. Buff the wood. I don't know what's going on. Oh, but we're we're taking. Oh no! I moved it accidentally. It's okay. That's what Control Z is for. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our high. And let's go back to our J tool. We. 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 Can also, I mean, any of this is also possible. So you can see I used the J tool to sort of 
to correct for mistakes, even on the color layer on the low level where the color is. Um, so you can you can you can use the stamp tool or the mixer brush tool on the well. I wouldn't use the mixer brush tool on the high level, but you can use the patch tool and the uh, you know the uh, stamp tool on the on the low level on where the color is if you need to fix some things. So there's a little bright spot here. I don't know what's going on there. Get out of here. Get out of here. And again, it's all about when you zoom out, like, are there distractions? And if you're like, nope, it's not a distraction, then you're good. But if there is a distraction, uh, then you want to take care of it. Like over here in the hair, this is this caught my eye when I zoomed out. Don't need that. Oops, wrong level. Wee. Hmm. Let's use the stamp tool. Boop, and it's gone. Actually, I need to make that a lot softer because that looked like I had used the stamp tool and I don't want it to look like I used the stamp tool. You can also use the spot healing brush tool. Not like that. You gotta change the, uh, uh, not the sample all layers, but just the current layer, please. Um, where else are we looking? Where are we looking? Um, let's see. There's a little fuzz here. Get rid of that fuzz. I'm just taking a look. I'm taking a step back and seeing if anything catches my eye. Not sure how I feel about this little tuft of hair here. I'm gonna go and take it out. Taking it out. All right, we're gonna use the J tool. Excuse me, the patch tool. Gotcha. Oh, that looks horrendous. Hmm. Can I do it without it looking terrible? Maybe. Maybe not. You can't do it without it looking terrible. Maybe you shouldn't do it. That's what I say. It's gonna look weird. It only looks weird because of the shadow. So we're gonna get rid of that shadow. It's gonna look normal. And you'd have no idea that is even there. And right now, the important thing to keep in mind, too, is that I'm really close to this image, right? I'm zoomed in pretty far. Um, so once you zoom out, these little details you don't even see. Don't worry. We're all about that perfection here at Jaeger Anderson Photography. You're here. Make things look good. So. Let's make things look good. So, yeah. So we're going to go back to our S tool. Super soft. You know, all, we're just going to soften this edge. I'm just going to build a little hair back, you know, just like that. And then it becomes less of an issue. You might be thinking, why? Why do that? Why do that? Because, well, I'm a monster. That's why. I'm a monster. Just kidding. No, it's because I didn't like the way that the tuff was going everywhere. And uh, this gives me more control. I'm all about more control. 
Mm, J. That's what I want. And then we'll get rid of some of these deviations so it doesn't look like it's repeating. A little randomness. Oh, let's go to our S tool. There we go. Am I happy? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. All right, that looks cool. That looks nice and sparkly, sparkly clean. Boom, 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 boom. What are we gonna do now? Well, now the fun begins. Now the real work begins, which is our uh, dodge and burn process. So don't need our hair folder open. Don't need our contour open. We want to start on our fixing and we're gonna create a new group for our helper. And inside there is going to be this curve, we're gonna add, uh, we're also gonna add a black and a black and white view, like so. Because dodging and burning is just the process of uh, shifting light and dark values. So we don't have to see the color, we don't have to see the image in color. So we're gonna open this up we're going to close our frequency separation. I'm going to go to our dodge. I'm going to use a normal brush tool, not a mixer brush tool. And uh, make sure that we're super low. We're on three. That's fine. And we're just going to, anywhere there's dark, we're going to paint white. And we're going to brighten it up. And that is the magic of dodging and burning. So this right here. Like so. Like that, so I can turn this off and on. Right, oops. Uh, it's very subtle, but it is powerful. So that is what we are doing. That is what we are doing. So we're just going in here. And we are lightening dark values and darkening white values. And through that process, what we're doing is we're creating smooth gradients of light. Um, and that process makes the skin look super smooth and sexy. It's pretty cool. Dodging and burning is by far the coolest. It's like, it's my all time favorite thing. Again, the process takes a long time, but the results, you, you can't argue with the results, you know? You're like, oh, it takes a long time to do. Well, yeah, it takes time, but it's worth it. A lot of people rely heavily on frequency separation, which is the first stop, step I did to smooth the skin. But what it does is it messes up the texture of the skin. But when you do, I mean, it messes up the texture of the skin because when you're shifting large swaths of skin, if you're changing the color in large areas, you can make it look very unnatural very quickly. And I mean, I mean lots of people do it. It's very popular. I mean, there's lots of people who, who are very popular and are making a living using frequency separation, doing loose and fast photo editing, and it's fine. But I think that the people in those images come out looking plasticky. They come out looking too perfect, and I think it looks strange. So I am old school proponent like high-end retouching demands that you use dodging and burning um, for perfecting the skin.
and that you rely as little as possible on frequency separation. Duh. Some people don't even like to do, um, you know, the cleanup and frequency separation. Um, some people prefer to just do that on a new blank layer. I, I like doing the cleanup and frequency separation because I can do, I can correct for color and I can correct for texture, even though it doesn't do it at the same time. And I recognize that it does take longer to do that. The trade-off is more control. So I'm going to turn this off and on. And as you can see, we're making progress. So anyway, that's my rant about dodging and burning versus frequency separation. Um, yeah, this is by far the coolest though, because I just love it. And 95% of your work is going to happen on this, uh, fixer stage. Contouring is last, you know, when you're after, after you've gone in and smoothed out the skin and you've, with the dodging and burning, the last thing you go in is you go in with the contouring with dodging and burning and you give it some dimensionality, right? You want to make the, you want to make your model or your subject or, you, you know, your subject, really, it could be, it could be a model. It could be, um, it could be a product. It could be a piece of food, you know, use dodging and burning in all those areas and you use it to add dimension out dimensionality to your uh, to your image, which is what we're going to do after we do this long process of cleanup. Dun, 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 dun. And you, you know, you can do this for as long or as little as you want. The more you do it, the the more it's going to look good. So Oops, don't want to do that. I take that back. Not mean to do that. Um, if you, you know, if you stop soon, so like, as long as I see something, I'm going, I'm going to work on it. I mean, I might get to a point where I'm like, Meh, I'm, I'm tired, I want to go to bed, or I want to do other things. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm, it's, it's hard for me to be like, well, that's, if I, if I know something is not done and then I stop, then I won't forgive myself. Um, but anyway, that's my rant. Let me know if you are a person who does retouching, please do let me know if you think that frequency separation is, you know, overrated like I do, or if you are, if you think dodging and burning is overrated, you know, if you're a person who's like, meh, dodging and burning, whatevs, you know. And granted, most people, even if they use frequency separation in the kind of like fast and loose thing that's super popular these days, they still do dodging and burning for contouring, but they don't do it as a means of smoothing skin like I'm doing right here. Right. So let me just excuse me. Let me turn this off and on so you can see what I'm talking about. Boop, boop. See that? Crazy, crazy. Um, most people do not do this because it's taking time. It's taken time. But of course, the results are worth it. Because her skin, right, her skin still looks like skin. There's a lot of depth and texture to her skin. It's not, I'm not doing anything. All I'm doing is shifting light. That's all I'm doing. I'm using curves and I'm shifting light, which is insane. 
don't want to do that. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Oh, look her little nose there. Gotta get, gotta get a little nose. Gotta do a little nosy nose. Uh, yep. Uh, yep, yep, yep. What's nice too is that you can use this for like other little tricks too, right? So you can use, you can use this to like accentuate moles or freckles and really make them pop. Super cool. You can also, I mean, dodging and burning, you can also use dodging and burning to like remove wrinkles out of clothing. I do that whenever I photograph clothing and it has a wrinkle, you can use dodging and burning because all your, the, the what makes up a wrinkle is just a quality of light. There's a piece of, there's a ridge that's catching light. So if you look at the lip here, this shadow is created because the light is coming down and it's hitting her lip and it's creating the shadow right here. And that's exactly how it works for, um, for uh, clothing. So if you just remove that, then you can smooth out clothing as well. You can unwrinkle fabric, which is pretty cool. Also, if you want to see what, how, what we've done so far, this is what it looks like. Ja, ja, pretty cool, right? Looks like a skeleton. Skeletor. Change my brush size, getting here nice and tight. In these small little, I mean, we could, we could, we could go in, we can go in small and get all the little crevices and little things like there. I don't want to. I don't want to do that too much. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be here forever. I just want to get. I just want to get the main, the main tones of the piece. Do 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 do. It's funny to think that this is my favorite part. I mean, it's all kind of my favorite part. I think I was talk I was talking to a friend the other day. Um, and I was explaining how, you know, or I was, oh, I was it was I was talking to my sister. I was explaining how, like, you have to love it. Like you have to love every part, you know, you know that you're doing the right thing when you love all of it, like if you love the marketing, if you love the tutorials, if you love learning about it, if you love, you know, <laughs> editing a single photo for hours on end, um, I think those are all good signs that you're in the right spot. Because there's no way, like if you if you did not enjoy this process, which I'm doing right here, you 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 wouldn't do it. Like you just would not do it. Um, and I think, yeah, you got to love it. You got to love it if you want to if you want to if you want to be good and you want to be reputable and you want to make a dip, you know, you want to separate yourself. You know, from other photographers, you want to be excellent, be excellent. Um, you got to do it. So. All right, let's see what we're looking at here. Looking pretty Snazzy. All right, let's turn off our helper. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. So this is how far we've come. Pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. We're pretty close to done. You know, we just got a, a few more steps here. Um, we're going to be rock solid. 
Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I think the other thing I want to do is I think I want to add some flowers over here, up here, right? And I think I want to, I obviously have to color grade this, but uh, yeah, this is going to be essentially it. Uh, let's go in here. I think we need to do Uh, J, go in here and get a little bit more. All right, looking pretty rock solid. Let's just, just any little things that I see that I want to fix here, just going to fix. It's not. I mean, I mean, I can do this forever, right? It's pretty good, though. It's see that see how smooth those transitions are now. You love to see it. You love to see it. All right, let's turn our helper back on. Also notice there's some other things I want to do. For example, I want to darken this uh, eyelid a little bit here. You know, and the funny thing, too, is like it's all about the more you do this, the more you understand light and how light works. For example, this isn't really a bag underneath her eye. Right. But say this person had a huge bag under their eye and you wanted to get rid of it or you wanted to reduce it. The process by which you do that is not to just lighten it, but actually to make the surrounding area darker. Um, which is cool, right? It has less to do with like you decide, oh, in order to make something stand out or reduce it, you affect the things around it rather than the thing itself. Just a cool little observation. Chins are always tricky. That's what I'm doing right here because they <laughs> they have so many little strange muscles inside them that pull them in all different directions. Um, and they, they catch so much light, um, and they're just funny. They're just funny. That looks good. We're getting there. We're getting there, folks. We are slowly but surely. I mean, I feel like, you know, I could do this. All, I could do this all day. I feel like that's from a movie. I can't remember where that's from. I can do this all day. Like some sort of like uh, action movie. Maybe it was Batman. I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. We can make it if we try, just the two of us. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know why that song is stuck in my head, but it is, but it is. All right, let's go back to our burn into for clarification. Burn is darken. Dodge is brighten. There are specific tools that are called dodge and burn, but for this, I am not using those tools. I am using um, just a brush, a very soft brush with a very low flow and it's very soft and I'm using curbs, but there are dodge and burn tools that you are native to Photoshop, but I am not using them. Just using a brush. That's typically what people do. They use the brush, the brushes for um, just a pa normal paintbrush 
for dodging and burning. It's what I was taught, and uh, that's why I stick to it. And it's funny, I, I rarely um, see people using, like, it's... V I almost never see people using the dodge and burn tools for dodging and burning, which is just interesting. It is an interesting thing. Uh, we're making so much progress. We're doing so well. Chins. Chins are always so tricky. So annoying are the chins. They just catch so much different light, you know? I could really be here all night if I wanted to be. But I don't think I want to be. So, how are we doing? We are doing all right. We are doing a just fine. Just fine. All right, let's check it out here. Boom, boom, baby. Boom, boom. Not bad. Not bad. Is it good enough? Is it good enough? Um, oops, that's not what I want. It's good enough, it's good enough. Let's go back to our frequency separation. Let's go back to our mixer brush, shift B. B, B, all right, here we go. We're gonna make this a little bigger. Very soft. Super low flow. Zoom in a bit. We're just going to take a peek and see if there's any, um, we're just going to smooth out the transitions between different areas. Why are we doing this? Well, I want there to be some uniformity. I'm looking for some uniformity. All right, let's go back up here. I'm gonna grab my patch tool. I'm gonna to get rid of these little things. Some areas I couldn't dodge and burn because they were, they were just too darn pesky. And sometimes you gotta take your L. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm like, I can't do it. So I'm gonna try to get rid of it with the patch tool. Because I'm a monster. All right, pretty good. Let's get rid of that there, don't need that. Don't need that. These little blemishes, get rid of those. All right, so some, oops. Let's make this a little more uniform. Bring in our brush tool, our mixer brush tool. I could go in here and I could do some serious work and some more retouching, but that's all I want to do right now. I think I'm ready to call this one done. I've worked on this a lot. You know, it's been, a, I guess, an hour, an hour and 10 minutes, about so. 
I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. So let's 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 go. Let's go to the home stretch. So we're going to go and we're going to create a new folder. And this is going to be our color correction, which is just our color grading. And we're going to excuse me. Sorry. Uh, we're going to create a selective color. And let's go to our neutrals and wah. what am I going for? I don't know. Aww. I'm going for something. I'm kind of I'm just I'm just futzing about seeing what looks good to me. You know, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty neutral to me. Looks like it took out some of those yellows. Um, let's go to the blacks. Add some blues in. That's fine. Some cyan. That's also fine. Go to our whites. That's fine. That looks nice and poppy. I like that. I like that a lot, but I do not like that on her face. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to paint black. On her face. Let's make that a lot higher. Boop. Let's just crank that up. Da -da -da -da. I probably don't need her hair either. TBH. What that did was it just made everything just pop. Made it a little more dramatic, you know? Oops, did not mean to do that. Bring that back. Bring that back. Oh, we don't want it on our hands either. Not in the hands. Let me make this a lot softer. Let me bring the flow down. I don't want to affect the flowers or as much as I can, I don't want to affect the flowers. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I'll take it. Um, this is good. This is a good place to start. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, I want to uh, duplicate this. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go L. Let's create the lasso tool. I just want to like grab that and go Command J. And then V, V, and just try that over here. See what this looks like. Ow! Look at that. Doesn't that look crapalicious? Just want something. Mm-hmm, and let's try a different blend mode, maybe? No. Uh, I think it's gonna be too much work. Too much work, don't wanna do it. All right, I'm ready to call this Dunzo. What else do I need to do? I need to dodge and burn, of course. I need to contour. Let's turn on our contour. So this is our burn. We want to B, B, and then we want this to be low. 
very low, zero three on our flow. This is our contouring, so we're gonna go around and give some definition. We're gonna follow along the jawline, a little up here, you know, underneath, right there. But really, oh well, it would help if I actually painted. So we're just gonna draw on the jawline and the forehead, top of the forehead. What we're doing is we're giving definition to the face. So we're following anywhere that's dark, we're following it. Um, we're just doing it naturally. Whatever well, feels most natural. And we'll go in, we'll do the eyebrows a little bit. Make the eyebrows pop. Um, that's about it, you know? Want to see before and after? Do, do, do. It's very subtle. Um, on the cheeks, we'll lighten the cheeks a little bit right here. A little triangle right here. Boop, 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 boop. A little triangle right here. Right. Main part of the forehead. The nose. Um, that looks pretty good. Very subtle. I think I want to I want to do a little bit more heavy on the contouring. Here. That looks good. That's what I'm going for. That is what we're going for. It looks like there's a little schmutz here on our chin. But I want to dodge out. And then we'll go back to our contour. Go back to our fixer. It's just this little, I think, oops. A little bit, it looks like the light's just catching it a little weird. That looks better. I like it. There we go. Not bad. All right, so what next? The last thing I want to do is I'm going to, oh, I'm, mm, I'll probably do a stamp visible layer. All right, then we're going to go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And that's just gonna bring it all together. Add a little pop to it. Boom. Um, except I don't think we need it everywhere. I think we just kind of want it in certain areas. So I'm gonna invert that mask and I'm just gonna paint it. I don't think we need it everywhere, you know? I think we can add a little bit to the eyes, maybe a little bit to the brows, maybe a little bit to the lips, a little bit on the cheeky cheeks, you know? And then that's good. I don't think we need to get carried away. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Do I want to add a vignette? I think we can do that in our next step. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to save this so that I don't lose all the work that I've done. Um, and then I'm going to save it again as a TIFF file that I will then um, import into uh, Capture One. It's something I've been experimenting with lately is I've been doing like the main gist of my color grading in Capture One. Don't know why, it's just something I've been playing around with and uh, you know, that's uh, just something I'm doing. So we're gonna Command S and we're gonna Put this in the desktop and Jenna, and then we're going to call it Jenna Tiff No Layer. So we're going to save it as a save. Image compression none. This all looks good. Okie doke. It looks like it's saved. 
So we will go back to capture one. We will import. There's our TIFF. We'll import it. We will look at it. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Looks great. Um, and then we're going to go over here and we're going to do some color grading. And we're going to find where my. Uh, oh, we can add a vignette. Oh. That's what I was thinking about doing. Maybe a slight vignette. Ever so slight. Um, and I want to add my um, color profile. User styles, that's what I want. So I have Jaeger custom styles. I have cool mat and cool mat too. I think the cool mat will be perfect. Um, I think it'll look nice and delicate and, and interesting. Um, yeah, I suppose there are other options as well. We could do something black and white. Got lots of stuff in here. I don't know. I think it looks good. I think it looks great. I think done is good. Done is good. All right, we're going to export this. We're going to go to our processes and we're going to go to JPEG. Adobe, this is all correct. We're not going to. Uh, we can open it with preview. That's fine. We're going to call it Jenna. And then boom, let's see what it looks like. Ta -da! There it is, the final image. I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it looks pretty awesome. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Happy to do more on it. Um, there obviously are more things I could have done with this image, but again, you know, I've been working on this for about an hour and 25 minutes now. I want to, uh, I want to, I wanted to stop here and, you know, call it Dunzo. I could keep going on it for a long time, but uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results and I hope you learned something and please like and subscribe. All right, have a good day.